What's up everybody, my name is Tucker. In today's video, we're talking about some NBA players that I have finally completely given up on. Let me know down in the comment section below who you guys have also given up on. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like rating on it. Check out my socials at the top of the screen as well. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is the opposite list from the one that I did the other day where there are players that I'm still holding out hope for but I've given up, I'm out. I'm out on these seven players. First up, Mo Bamba. I've been out for a couple of years. I really wasn't a huge Mo Bamba guy when he came into the draft. I recognized the potential and the physical skill set that he had, his ability to space the floor while being a big guy that can also block shots. I've given my Mo Bamba analysis a couple of times, so I will keep this brief, but essentially, from the minute that he showed up to the NBA, it was clear that the only thing he was confident in offensively was his ability to shoot threes. And even then, he wasn't very good at shooting threes offensively. And he, was, uh, he wasn't strong enough to earn consistent minutes to be on the floor to be able to demonstrate shot blocking ability. I'm just out. I, I'm not one of those people that continually thinks that we're going to get a Mo Bamba breakout season at some point. He'll probably be a, a solid role player big that'll be able to protect the rim and things like that. But in terms of him being a starting level five, I'm out. I would much rather have Wendell Carter Jr. at this point in Orlando than I would Mo Bamba. That's where I'm at with him. Next up, controversial one. Hear me out on this one. I'm going to say his name, but then I'm going to give you some reasons why. R.J. Barrett of the New York Knicks. R.J. Barrett's a good NBA player, and he's going to continue to be a good NBA player. However, when he was drafted slash when he went to Duke, the idea of what I thought R.J. Barrett was going to be then and what I think he's going to be now are entirely different. When he went to Duke, people thought he was going to be the first pick in the draft. He had some really, really interesting international moments with Canada where he you know, took down the U.S., and it looked like this was a, a can't-miss, big-wing perimeter creator, guy that's going to attack the rim, shoot everything you'd want, and as a lefty as well, which is a nice bonus. But then he goes to Duke, and it, it's just it's just not as clean as that. The, the playmaking skills and the vision aren't there. He has tunnel vision a little bit. And he's good, but not great at getting to the rim. It just it didn't meet the expectations that I had. And now since he's been in the NBA, he's grown, he's developed, he's gotten better. He's going to be a good player. I don't think that he's ever going to be like a high-level all-star, all-NBA guy. And at the time that he went to Duke, I definitely thought that was the path that he was going to be on. So I haven't given up on RJ Barrett as an NBA player. Overall, I think he's going to be a good starter. But as an all-star, a future all-star, future all-NBA guy, I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm no longer waiting around on the RJ Barrett break out into, you know, one of the top guards in the league. That, that's just not something I'm waiting on. If you're looking for players to build around in New York, it's Julius Randle, it's RJ Barrett. But if you're looking for like a top, 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 top level guy, I don't think that player is on the roster, essentially. Next up, a guy that continually gets traded. Again, I'm not out on him as an NBA player, but I like I would not be excited if my team traded for this guy. That's where I'm at. Robert Covington of the Portland Trailblazers. He's like, he's always that, oh, we're a team that needs wing depth. We need someone that can guard and can shoot. Let's go out and get Robert Covington. He's always that guy, whether it's Houston, whether it's Portland, whether it's all these other teams that he's gone to. And I'm just, I'm just out on being excited about trading for Robert Covington. He's a good player. His defensively, he certainly slipped from his time uh, either in Philly or in Minnesota when he first got there, when he was honestly incredible for a little bit. Um, he's just not that same level of guy anymore. Certainly not a fantastic on-ball defender either. And he's a fine shooter. Like he's a nice role player guy, but Robert, I guess the way I would phrase it is like Robert Covington as the missing piece to a team. I'm out on. I think he's in a different part of his career. I think he's good, but not great anymore. Next up, Jaleel Okafor. This is an interesting one, right? Because you go back to when Jaleel Okafor and Carl Anthony Towns are coming out of the draft. And for 90% of the college season, Jaleel Okafor is tearing it up at Duke. Everybody loves him as a prospect. Like, this guy's the first pick in the draft. He's bringing back the big man. He's bringing back the post-scoring big man. He's going to be a 20-10 and 10 guaranteed Al Jefferson type player. Lock it in. Uh, the problem was all that was 100% true, but it didn't really work out super well because first of all, he went to Philly during the process. That didn't go super well, but just in general, I think he got there and people were like, yeah, this guy can score 20 and 10. Al Jefferson, sign me up. Problem was couldn't guard and the NBA is just not focused around post scoring anymore. And he wasn't able to adapt and develop his game any further. And I'll give him credit. There's been plenty of draft quote unquote busts that if it didn't work out at first, they were just done. They were out. You know, someone go check on Anthony Bennett, right? But I, I will give 
the Jaloak for some credit in terms of trying to find a different role and trying to be uh, a bench scoring big, and he's been able to do that. But in terms of him being anything significant within the within the NBA, I'm out. I've given up. Uh, I think the Al Jefferson comp was accurate, and I think that ultimately a, a player like this in Jaloak for that, that can't guard starting fives is going to be a bench big guy that can score. He's like Anis Cantor. He can score a little bit. He's going to offensive rebound for you. But he can't guard. And so his role is going to be extremely limited. And so as a result, I'm out. Andre look for Another big guy up next. Bull Bull of the Denver Nuggets. Now, again, let me explain. I think that basically from the moment that he slipped and then got drafted by Denver, everybody's been waiting and, and saying, oh, Bull Bull is going to be, he's going to be the missing piece for this Denver team. He's going to be a, a starter, an all-star even. I... I'm okay leaving early. If I'm wrong about this, that's fine. But I'm okay leaving early on uh, on the bowl bowl thing. I, I just I just haven't seen enough. Like I, I get the excitement around the size and, and the length and the defensive potential and the offensive skill. I get that stuff. I just I just don't see what everybody else sees. I, I see a guy that has potential and is raw, but I don't see a guy that's ready to contribute. I don't see a guy that's ready to. Uh, be a significant part of the team and granted it's Denver like they have done a fantastic job of developing players year after year after year maybe I should give them more credit for that and maybe I should give them the benefit of the doubt on this one but I think this is just relative to everybody else's expectations if Bobo becomes a, a fine role player in the NBA I wouldn't be surprised at all but I think that everybody else or a lot of other people are waiting around on this like huge breakout and he's going to be this like big time star for Denver or for another team that is the part of of the bowl bowl experience that I have given up on, and maybe it's just because of other people's expectations. But I'm just I'm just out. Next up, Lonnie Walker. This is a guy that I liked when he came into the draft. I liked him when, in college. I was like, oh, he's going to go to San Antonio. He's going to develop. He's going to be awesome. Yeah, they've got too many guards for them for me to believe that they ever think that Lonnie Walker is going to be something. If 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 San Antonio was really excited about the potential of Lonnie Walker, even as like a role player. They wouldn't have then gone and drafted like five guards afterwards, right? I mean, you've got DeJounte Murray, you've got uh, Derek White, the, the, the kid that they just drafted this year. You've got Keldon Johnson. I know that some of them can play up and down positions and play on the wing. All of them pretty much have good size. But I just, it sucks because I, I thought Lonnie Walker was going to be a nice scoring two guard in the NBA. I thought that he had, uh, you know, pretty good scoring instincts. He was going to be able to shoot, had good size, going to be able to guard. And it just hasn't happened. And I, I'm willing to I'm willing to, to just be out on Lonnie Walker. I feel like at this point, you have to kind of start picking which San Antonio guards you do and don't like. And, uh, you know, I, I would rather have DeJounte Murray. I'd rather have Derek White. I'd rather have Calvin Johnson than I would Lonnie Walker. And that is uh, below the expectations that I had for him when he came into the league. So ultimately, I'm out. And then last up, this one's got me some heat because he's so recently drafted. I promise I'm not just trying to hate on Orlando here, but it's Cole Anthony of the Orlando Magic. I... I would much rather have Suggs, kid that just drafted, Fultz, and RJ Hampton. I'd rather have any of those three guys than Cole Anthony. I think Cole Anthony's fine, but I, I think it's a typical like archetype of guys that we've seen just not succeed in recent NBA history. A guy that can score at like a below average to average level, and that's it. That's the only thing he can do. He's not a good playmaker. He's an okay shooter, but he's basically just a scoring guard, and he's like 6'2", 6'3". There's nothing special about that. There's plenty of guys in the NBA, plenty of guys that are trying to get into the NBA right now that are exactly that level of player. And Cole Anthony is going to continue to get opportunities because he's recently highly drafted and things like that. But I think ultimately, the versatility, the potential two-way impact of someone like RJ Hampton is going to rise to the top and someone that I really want to see continue to develop in, in Orlando. Assuming Markel Fultz comes back fully healthy, I think he's better at everything that Cole Anthony is supposedly good at. And then Suggs, I, I I love that dude. I I feel like he makes winning plays. I feel like he's a two way player. I feel like he impacts the game in other ways than just scoring. He's a good playmaker, and that just doesn't leave a lot of room for Cole Anthony. So basically, I'm saying like Cole Anthony as like a future piece for Orlando. I'm just out. I'm not that excited about him. I, I think that he's he's just another guy. I hope he proves me wrong. That would be super cool. It'd be nice if Orlando had like four really, really good guards and there's all this, you know, you can kind of mix and match all these different guys. But ultimately, if you're asking me to pick the four guards in Orlando, I'm picking Cole Anthony last. And so I've, I'm just I'm just out. I've given up on him. So yeah, those are my seven guys I've given up on. Let me know down in the comment section below which ones you have officially given up on in the NBA. Went with some different reasonings for this, some different, uh, you know, kind of ideas around giving up on, on NBA players. But it's Mo Bamba, RJ Barrett, Robert Covington, Jaleel for Bobo, Bonnie Walker, 
and Cole Anthony. And uh, yeah, that's going to be the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like rating on it. Check out my other videos of the boxes on the screen as well. And these socials at the top of the screen there, they're down in the description below. With all those things said, once again, my name is Tucker. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you all next time.